President Biden's first Summit of Democracy convenes virtually today and tomorrow with Democratic leaders from around the world in an effort to mark the beginning of a year of action towards strengthening democracies. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse writes that the key to success at the summit will be defining the main challenge facing democratic societies. A strong advocate against kleptocracy and foreign corruption, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse joins us now to discuss the summit and Biden's strategy on countering corruptions. Thanks for joining us, Senator. Great to be with you. Thanks for including me. For sure. And so how much, how much recognition or, or willingness uh, to acknowledge the United States' role in, in, in kind of facilitating global corruption over the last you know, the, the rise in the last five, 10 years of, you know, first Delaware, ironically, but, you know, South Dakota and other states, you know, we talk about offshore, but we've pulled a lot of it onshore. So w when we talk about this from a global perspective, how, how, how much willingness is there to recognize that the U.S. now has a significant role to play, not just in pushing it globally, but in cracking down on it ourselves? I would say we uh, need to behave with our international uh, colleagues a little bit like we had to behave in Glasgow. Um, we really want to solve this problem. And we also have to recognize some of our own iniquities. Um, and the very good news is that we come into this particular conference having cleaned up one of the worst cesspools uh, in the US, which was the uh, dark money shell corporation mess. And a treasury just this week announced its regulations to implement that new law. Um, so we come in with better credibility than we would have a year ago. Senator, how much do you trust Joe Biden to fulfill a mission like that, given uh, his own son's many international dealings and his own sort of history of uh, friendly, friendly, friendly relationships with, as, as Ryan mentioned, uh, the, the corporations in Delaware and around the country and world? Yeah, I think um, we are at a stage where this has really arisen as a global issue. I think the president and his whole national security team understanding, understand that underlying a lot of uh, what our present dangers are is a system that supports the kleptocrats and the criminals and the autocrats who are our enemies by giving them aid and giving them shelter for particularly their ill-gotten loot. Um, and I think that the biggest thing about this conference is that I think that is now seen as a national security imperative. And it's also something that we can actually do quite practical things to fix. So um, I think it's not just President Biden's personal commitment to this. I think this is also to a certain extent, as they say, an idea whose time has come. Senator, if this is a national security threat and these are enemies, which countries in particular are you looking at? Well, mostly, you know, Russia is a kind of a nonstop threat in this regard, and it combines the elements of being anti-democratic and deliberately out to disrupt and damage democracy wherever it can and being autocratic, run by a bunch of thieving oligarchs. Putin did not become the richest person on the planet by virtue of his salary. Um, and because it's kind of a scorpion's bottle over there, uh, nobody wants to leave their money in places where it's vulnerable to the next bigger thief or the next bigger oligarch or the closer pal of Putin or Putin himself to steal it all. So they want to send their money out into rule of law systems where they can hide it uh, and protect themselves. And um, that's where I think the rule of law nations have a very powerful uh, countermeasure at their disposal if we choose to use it. And one of the key vehicles for this, this global laundering is real estate, you know, in, in yep. major cities, like all around the world, London, but also, you know, heavily Miami, New York, San Francisco, L.A., uh, what you know? What what can the federal government do to 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 crack down on that? Because it it it's it's offshoot effect is to drive up you know real estate prices across the board as well, not at, as well as destabilize the, the 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 country and the world. Yeah. Well, we have a pretty good model in our banking system, which has 
robust anti-money laundering provisions, and the banks actually are quite accepting of that responsibility because they don't want to be involved in corrupt money laundering for you know criminals and really bad people. Uh, but it ends at the bank. So if you're a hedge fund or if you're a real estate uh, enterprise, you don't have to answer uh, to the uh, same rules that our banks do. And we do need to extend it beyond that because whether you're a uh, art dealer or a yacht dealer or a real estate dealer or um, somebody who's managing a kleptocrat's finances, it's the same problem. And money launderers will find the way of least resistance to try to get around it. So we have to build a much more robust wall of defense that includes these other professionals that are now the um, end around uh, the banks. Um, and I've got a bill to try to fix that, and we're going to see what we can do. But the first step was the shell corporations, and we'll move on from there. The art dealer I'd, point is an interesting one. Um, and it, Kim, I'll, I'll let you go, and then I'll tag along yeah. after you after you read. OK, well, just this week, President Biden released the United States strategy on countering corruption, and the administration says it's going to curb illicit finance, clamp down on money laundering and other methods for hiding illicit funds in rule of law nations, and also give assistance resources to achieving anti-corruption policy goals. Um, you applauded this strategy, Senator, saying that it sets a solid framework. Curious, um, when we're going to clamp down on these bad actors, are we talking about American citizens who are going around the world and doing things that they should not be doing in, in order to hide wealth? Or are we talking about um, the, the foreign countries and the foreign actors themselves? Are we looking at a lot of sanctioning of other countries? What are we looking at in, in order to clamp down? Yeah, I think what we're looking at is an international regime that requires disclosure of who the true owner is of property and funds so that uh, you don't create this, what now is probably a several trillion dollar dark economy uh, that supports the kleptocrats and the criminals and the autocrats who are our enemies. Uh, we are giving them real aid and comfort by allowing the system to continue. And if we work as a group of nations to push back on that and to require much greater transparency, then everybody will have to begin to comply with that and there'll be less thievery and less mischief in the world and that is you know to our to our benefit Senator, I was going to say earlier, the art dealing thing was an interesting point to me because I'm, I'm saying this sincerely as somebody who thinks the Trump administration had plenty of problems with this too, but having Joe Biden at this sort of virtual Zoom conference talking about this, is it almost insulting to other countries? I mean, it seems sort of ridiculous coming from Joe Biden, this idea that he's going to, to crack down on international kleptocracy when his own son tagged along with him on trips while he was vice president and did some of his own business along these lines on those trips. Is it is is it an insult to other countries to have Joe Biden sort of claiming the moral high ground on this question? No, I don't think so. I think the uh, United States has been a leader in anti-money laundering efforts for a long time. The Treasury for a long time has had FinCEN as perhaps the most robust anti-money laundering uh, authority anywhere in the world. They've got new uh, powers to deal with uh, shell corporations and criminals and kleptocrats hiding behind U.S. shell corporations. Um, so I think America is actually putting a pretty good foot forward. As I said at the beginning, we have not been perfect. The Trump years were not good for us in this regard. And um, we've got a little bit of, of uh, humble pie that we need to uh, bring to these conferences. But I do think the longer record of the country is as a leader on this. People do uh, require um, American leadership. And the fact that the U.S. dollar is still the currency of choice for the world means that our sanctions can powerfully influence the behavior of uh, other actors. And um, so we really have a very, very strong position to clean up these uh, international cesspools and make the world a safer and more honest place. And, and real quickly, Senator, before we let you go, because you've been a real you know, climate change uh, champion in the, in the Senate, 
is, is the climate title of the Build Back Better Act essentially ag agreed to, and the questions are now around family medical leave and other things, or is is the climate title still uh, still up for grabs too, or or yeah, where 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 is that? We're still hard at work on improvements. At the end of the day, the only measure that counts is emissions reduction and making sure that we get to the safe zone of 1.5 degrees or less global warming. And so, you know, eyes on the prize, as they say, we're working to strengthen the bill so it points us better towards that important trajectory, that vital trajectory. Great. Well, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Great to be with you. Thanks for your attention to this topic. And we will have more rising right after this. Stick around.